Okay, so let us just uh, do a proof of this. So, one convenient way of writing this particular uh, this particular condition is 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 to simply write this lambda star lambda star transpose a x minus b equals 0. Now, why is this uh, why can I write it like this? The reason is because I know that I know that uh, a x minus b or or rather b minus a x is always greater than equal to 0. Since b minus a x is greater than equal to 0 moreover lambda is also greater than equal to 0. So, then their inner product will be 0 only if you have this only if you have this sort of situation where where if if there is slack in one of them then the other one must be uh, the other one must be 0 right. So, so, so this would be a compact way of expressing uh, expressing this. So, so let me write write it more neatly. So, for x star in in omega p and lambda star in omega d the above condition the complementary slackness conditions men tree complementary slackness conditions are equivalent to lambda star transpose a x minus b equal to 0 and a transpose lambda minus c the whole transpose x star sorry lambda star here x star equals 0 ok. All right. So, now we want to show that uh, the necessary and sufficiency of complementary slackness for the optimality of x star. So, part 1 is say suppose x star in omega p is is optimal for the primal LP. So, now if if x star is optimal for the primal LP ok is it possible that the dual is infeasible it is not possible because the duality theorem of linear programming we learned that if the primal has a solution then so does the dual right. So, it cannot be that the dual if you have a finite optimal solution for the primal then you cannot have that uh, the uh, uh, that the dual is uh, dual is infeasible. So, which means that what this means is that omega d is not empty. Okay. Moreover, omega d is not empty and so it cannot be that the dual is infeasible and moreover there always exists a solution to the dual and the optimal values are equal. We know that from the, uh, the uh, from the theorem of uh, from the dual from the strong duality theorem. So, optimal value optimal value of primal L p equals the optimal value of dual. What does this mean? If I look at C transpose, so C, 
So, which means that first not only that the omega d is not empty, there exists a lambda star in omega d such that c transpose x star which was my primal optimal value is equal to b transpose lambda star. All right. Now, if you compare this with uh, this particular this strong duality statement, compare that with the weak duality statement which is written here, the weak duality statement which is written here then what, what, what uh, and this this weak duality statement remember was for all x in omega p and all lambda in omega d. So, consequently we get by taking x as x star and lambda as lambda star what are we going to get? We are going to get that c transpose x star is equal to lambda transpose a x star is equal to b transpose lambda star. by combining with weak duality. Okay. So, now what does this say? what does this say this uh, what does this uh, what does the red statement here say? Well, the red statement simply says that now I can do the following I can I can put I, I can take this part together there are actually two equations here there are, there is one equation here and another equation here. So, let me take one of e, uh, each of them uh, uh, separately. So, what does wh what this is effectively saying is that lambda star transpose a x star minus b equals 0 and and that a transpose lambda star minus c the whole transpose x star equals 0. Right. And now, since this this must since if these are uh, if the if this has to be if these have to be equal to 0 what does this mean this means that comp it has to be that component wise component wise they should be equal to 0 that means see remember this 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 quantity is always less than equal to 0 this quantity is always greater than equal to 0 this quantity is always uh, this quantity is always less than equal to 0. Oh, sorry, this is greater than equal to zero, and like, and this is great, and this is also greater than equal to zero. So, for the inner products of these uh, these vectors to turn out to be equal to zero, it has to be that component-wise they are actually they are, they are each zero. Otherwise, otherwise the, you will not get that the inner product ends up zero. You in the first case you would get that the inner product was is negative. Otherwise, in the second case you will get that the inner product is strictly positive. Right? Okay. So, what does this mean? This means that lambda j lambda star j times the the times this this sum that we had here which is times this sum or lambda star i times this sum which is which is give, which is captured in this inequality that must be so lambda star lambda star i times summation over j equals 1 to n a i j x star j minus b equals 0 uh, minus b i equals 0, which means that what does this mean? If e, now, now a i j x star j minus b i can be either equal to 0 or or can uh, or or strictly less than 0. These are the only two possibilities which means that. So, so if it is equal to 0 this holds trivially, if it is strictly less than 0 
then the other the only way that you can have an the the product equal to 0 is that lambda star i itself is 0 right. So, that which means that if a summation a i j j equals 1 to n x star j minus b i is less than 0 imp must imply lambda star i equal to 0 and similarly, we can show the other way around the other similarly sum over the sum if this inequality holds with uh, strictly then then the corresponding x star j must be equal to 0 right. So, so this is this is one direction of the complementary slackness uh, condition what what we have uh, concluded so far is if x star is optimal then it has to be that these complementary slackness conditions must hold. Now, let us look at the other direction part 2 the other direction. So, assume that So, assume that lambda star transpose A x minus B equals 0 and lambda star transpose A minus C the whole transpose x star equals 0. Okay, for some x star in omega p and lambda star in omega d. Now, what does this uh, what does this say? Well, we can uh, we can rearrange this a little bit. So, the first the first equa uh, the first equation simply says b transpose lambda star equals lambda star a lambda star transpose a x star. Now, the second one the second one uh, the second equation uh, it uh, again says that. Um, so, the second equation Okay, I have made a mistake in writing this sorry. The second equation similarly says that lambda star transpose A x star is equal to c transpose x star all right. So, now what does this mean? This means that b transpose lambda star is equal to c transpose x star. So, the very fact that these two conditions hold for some x star in omega p and lambda star in omega d from from there we have, we, have, we conclude that b star b transpose lambda star equals c transpose x star. And now, what this what does this mean? We know from weak duality that uh, we know from weak duality that an inequality in this direction must hold and if any and if equality and we know from the strong duality theorem that if equality holds then it has to be that these two are optimal in ok. So, then it follows that x star is optimal for the primal LP. And, and that lambda star is optimal for the dual LP.
okay. So, what 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 is this? Uh, uh, so, this completes the proof and what so what have we learned from this? We have learned basically that as far as optimality is concerned optimality of linear programs is concerned essentially it comes down to just ok. So, what does this the, uh, theorem teach us? It basically teaches us that if you have you if you take a candidate optim, uh, feasible solution x star for the primal and uh, a candidate feasible solution for the dual. Uh, 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 lambda star, they are optimal if and only if they satisfy these these two equations. Now, these two equations if you see them they are actually not linear equations. It says that lambda star tra transpose uh, something in x must be equal to 0 and si likewise something in lambda transpose x star is equal to 0. So, this so this is the where the hardness of of uh, linear programming actually creeps in. So, the first con the simply checking that x star and lambda star belong are feasible is a matter of checking that they satisfy bunch of linear inequalities and it is easy to generate solutions to linear inequalities. But you have to also for for finding an optimal solution you have to effectively end up solving some nonlinear equation even though the original problem was just a linear problem. And this is the uh, this is the root of uh, why this is linear programming is is non trivial, but but you will soon see that this kind of nonlinearity comes up in all types of problems involving inequality constraint. The nonlinearity is in is in this uh, is in this product equation. So the lambda star, so sorry, this was supposed to be x star. The lambda star uh, is multiplied with this to get you uh, and that product this this quadratic thing has to be equal to 0 quadratic equation must be 0 likewise this quadratic equation must be 0. Yes, but the it is if you look at it as, as equations in your variables x star and lambda star then these are not linear equations anymore all right. Another way of thinking about is say, uh, expressing the same thing is that if you look at this condition this condition simply says that if something is true then something else is true. It is a conditional condi uh, statement. It is not merely asking you to you cannot write this as simply a solution of linear uh, equations. It says that if if this is strict then that must hold and if it is not strict then there is no particular it says no it says nothing in particular right. So, this so the uh, so, this is the um, uh, this is why linear programming is actually harder than it than it appears because eventually you have it at at its root even though the original problem is just involves only linear uh, formulations at its root to solve the problem you are ending up to making a solving some nonlinear equation all right ok. So, that is one thing, but having said that the the uh, if I gave you two uh, candidate solutions to just verify that they are optimal is very easy. All I need to do is just check these two, check that they are feasible and simply check that this holds right. So, finding one may be harder, but verifying is absolutely easy because all I have to do is just check this right. So, what this has done is taken a problem of which was of uh, uh, which is linear programming and reduced it to 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 just simply checking some uh, nonlinear equations checking for the satisfaction of some nonlinear equation. Now, you will see why this is uh, why this is a, a, a um, you know a, a significant simplification because we started off uh, thinking of linear programming saying that all solution it must have a solution on an extreme point, but then there were so many possible extreme points it was not easy to characterize them and we said well well if I gave you even one extreme point how do I confirm that it is in fact optimal without comparing with all the other extreme points of the linear program. All of this is extremely hard to do this is this in comparison is is some you know something uh, that you can uh, potentially do much more easily yes not necessarily not necessarily. So, the earliest algorithms for solving linear programs were actually went about their business by searching over extreme points just cycled over extreme points and made sure that you are getting to a better extreme point at each step 
and 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 that's how they uh, try to find the solution. Modern algorithms for LPs try to attack this directly, try to solve these nonlinear equations directly. Yes, yes, yes. So effectively, solving a linear program amounts to finding an x star which is uh, which is feas which is in the feasible region of the primal, and alongside a lambda star which is in the feasible region of the dual. Such so so they so it means being feasible for the primal and being feasible for the dual simply means that they must satisfy these linear they must lie in these polyhedra and but in addition to that they must also satisfy these nonlinear equations right that is what uh, that is what it means uh, to solve a linear program ok all right. So, this, this particular condition uh, the reason ok I will I'll also give you a bit of intuition on why this condition uh, this condition appears. Um, uh, the 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 reason for this is that if you look at the uh, uh, the dual variables, remember I had told you that I had mentioned this once, and this I will mention this again in uh, later also. That if you look at the dual variables, the dual variables are actually uh, the same as what we were earlier calling Lagrange multipliers. So when we were looking at optimization problems with equality constraint. We had these additional variables which we denoted by lambda one for each constraint. They came out of uh, out of doing uh, um, uh, applying implicit function theorem on the constraint and so on. Now those additional variables are actually the the Lagrange multiplier. Now the, if you look at the complementary slackness condition, what it effectively it says, the complementary slackness condition effectively says that I need to have only Lagrange multipliers for those constraints that hold with equality. If so that although the constraint is stated as an inequality, if it holds with equality, then there is an applicable Lagrange multiplier for that constraint. If it does not hold with equality, which means if this inequality is strict, then the Lagrange multiplier for it is effectively 0. All right. So, that is if that is what this these conditions are saying. And and uh, it's the the situation is completely symmetric between the primal and the dual. The variables of the primal are uh, are are the dual variables of the constraints of the dual, or the Lagrange multipliers of the constraints of the dual. Uh, okay, and likewise the variables of the dual are Lagrange multipliers of the constraints of the primal. All right. And so you can you can uh, make the same claim about the dual as well. So if there is a constraint in the dual that that uh, that is that is strict, then the corresponding Lagrange multiplier or equivalently the primal variable must be zero because it it it, it does not count effectively. Okay, you again as I said, we will see this in uh, see this some more uh, as we go further into uh, uh, nonlinear optimization. Mm -hmm.